I will try not to repeat some of the other things that have been said. Um, there seems to be uh, in the original motion, which the I would say just a controversy point. So in the original motion would have been much better if we stopped at the end of the second paragraph and just dropped the word including, which seems to make sense up to there. And then it's a terribly clarifying quite worried as well. Uh, the, the amendment fixes that for the standard at great length. <laughs> the, um, the main problem that's raised is one about bad landlord, bad tenants, and the problem to cause to, to neighbours. The solutions that have been offered aren't necessarily the fixes to that. We've heard from Councillor Smart that there are quite a lot of powers already in existence that uh, should be used and can be used and are used to deal with the problem with families, be they in HMOs or others, and neighbours and other things. The, this is, you know, uh, bad tenants are a problem, bad landlords are in many mm -hmm. ways worse. They're inflicting uh, things on other people rather than inflicting things on themselves and their neighbours. The, the problems are great. The, the problem of mandating diversity has been brought up, and, you know, suggesting some of these parts of this motion about that seems to be a very different issue to dealing with the problem of neighbours. Um, we got something, as I mentioned, in the current local plan. Plainly, it's hard to use. It must be hard to use. I mean, to have such things at all, you've got to have a good evidence base to start with. As Councillor Sars has said, there isn't one at the moment, and we'll need to collect information over some years perhaps to come up with one. Uh, that report, which I think everyone's agreed is necessary, will help us do that. The idea, and I said, I accept this idea of, say, having a quotient on HMOs is difficult again. If the one next to you is already there and it's a problem, stopping another one down the street won't fix it. The, um, the nature of the, the shared housing market is, I think, particularly at Cambridge. It's very large, and I'm not sure the example of um, so-called best practice in Oxford is necessarily a good one. Um, I think best practice really needs to be something that all the authorities in the country accept, not something that's being certainly trial in one place. I think the experiment in Oxford is fairly new, and I'd like to see it a bit more evidence before I really take a judgment on it. The, the unintentional effects of things that are particularly worrying. Um, I do think that there might be an effect on housing costs of elevation on those things. Um, I think it will affect the young, people maybe new to Cambridge, other towns, or further away. They may be here to do the things that we all know about, study, research, work in, thriving high-tech economy. You know, we need those people. Uh, just as likely they to work in shops, hospitals, care homes, or even as employees of this council. I've been seeing last year people who, one of whom have been an employee of this council who lived in a care home which had a particularly difficult service of care home in an HMO, uh, where the landlord was plainly <coughs> kicked, being dragged kicking and screaming by council officers to bring it up to standard. And this was below the size, which is uh, that picture. Um, I think these people, you know, these whole groups, you know, people not just the high tech who work in um, care homes and that's um, These groups of people are also making a big contribution and are very worried about things that limit, you know, their freedoms too. This is about real people, and I think um, we've got to be very careful about anything to do with the shared housing market. Uh, these are people that are most in need of and uh, the ones that are least able to afford alternatives or all this is trouble. 